Tonight on The Five Show, meet two-time Academy Award winner Kate Blanchett. What does she have to say about women's body image issues and the double standards when it comes to men? Meet JPG, The Five Show's fabulous and flamboyant fashionista. And meet Kareem and Gladys. Who would believe they're mummies when they're flaunting such svelte and sexy bodies? Welcome to the Vibe Show! It's the episode on the bod tonight. Come, let's face it. Most people look into the mirror and they don't like what they see. Yeah, you know, it doesn't help the magazines, the media, basically project thin is in. Plus, with all those apps these days, not apps, are uh, apps, mm -hmm. where people kind of change the, to look really, really skinny. Obscure the truth. Yeah, so everybody thinks everybody's thin. Absolutely. There's one group of people who face constant pressure to look good and they are actors. Now, understandably, because they're always in the public eye. Mm-hmm. And two-time Academy Award winner Kate Blanchett was in town for Singapore Fashion Week and she talked to us, um, our Five Show reporter Vanessa, about her opinion on women and their body image issues. Hi Kate, thanks for Hi. joining us today. Pleasure. Now, how do you define true beauty? True beauty, I think, is a unique thing. Uh -huh. I think it's not a homogenous thing. Okay. And it's, um, we're so obsessed with this idea of perfection. Whereas I, for me personally, the, I subscribe to a much more Asian uh, outlook in, in relation to beauty, to find the imperfection in something and celebrate it. Um, you know, we're all different and we shouldn't try to necessarily look like one another, but just work with what we've got. Now, you've spoken about the pressures of being a woman in Hollywood. I can just imagine, you know, in this day and age especially. Now, how important are looks right now in, in modern society? And what's your take on the double standards when it comes to men? I don't think that it's just in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. I mean, we still don't receive equal pay for equal work in my industry, in your industry, in so many industries. It's around the world. Um, you know, uh, so we, if we can't get to first base, if you, it's, we're, we're over 50% of the population. And so it's just in 2015, we shouldn't be having that conversation anymore. We just need the legislative change to make that finally happen. I believe that too. Now, as a mother of four, I must ask you, how do you stay in such good shape? I, well, I don't. You, you don't? Just, <laughs> you hopefully wear <laughs> things that cover the bumps. I mean, there's, look, the wheels are always falling off. But, you know, as uh, fathers don't ask, how do you juggle fatherhood and, and your career? It's still a question that, you know, that women are asked. And the school week is not based around pick-up time. Yeah. And um, there's no such thing as a part-time job, as most women will tell you. You're expected to work to, to deliver full-time results on part-time pay. So, you know, but so my life is no different to any other working mother's life. If you try and juggle things, it doesn't always work, but I fortunately have a supportive partner, so. Now, how has motherhood changed your views towards uh, beauty, fashion, and yourself? I think it's given me a greater degree of patience. <laughs> I think it, it makes you a more, well, it's made me a more compassionate um, uh, person. I mean, there's a, and, and it, so it's been a good gift. It's made me more economical about uh, the way I uh, approach my work. And um, it's, it's opened up my eyes to a whole way of looking at, you know, the sense of aging and longevity and their, their, the notion of the future. So it's been a gift creatively um, as well as... Words. Yeah, certainly. Now, what would you say to your daughter regarding this whole beauty and body image issue? Well, it's, it's an obsession that the media have. And so therefore, you know, because we all consume that, it, you look at young girls and their relationship to their sexuality and their body, and it's really worrying. But my mother was very big on self-respect and the respect of others. And she was very big on ed education. So she was more interested in my the health of my skin rather than um, how I, you know, so-called beauty, which was, I think it's a very different. If you talk about being mentally healthy, and physically healthy, then you will automatically have a, you know, a greater inner glow. <laughs> I like that. We have an inner glow from reading and educating ourselves. I think so. Yeah, and caring ourselves well. Yeah. All right, thank you, Kate, for thank being you. on The Five Show. That's Kate Blanchard, everyone. Wow. As sensible as she is beautiful, yeah. I hate Vanessa. I want to interview Kate <laughs> I Blanchett. I hate her too. <laughs> anyway, you know, there was a recent news article on sexy moms who had to go through a roller coaster fitness journey before coming to terms with their bodies. And we've got two of these moms in the studio. They'll be sharing about what they had to go through to achieve fitness 
and wellness. So let's meet sexy mummy number <laughs> one. She's a nutritionist, uh, nutritional specialist and a personal trainer and believes in the saying, you are what you eat. Please welcome the founder of Mums in Sync, Kareen Lai. Hello. Hi, Kareen. So what do you eat today? <laughs> I'm not had my dinner yet. Oh, so <laughs> I'll have it huh? after the show. She is what? She eats what she eats. <laughs> no, no, no. I eat spinach, so I'm spinach. I'm green. You're Kermit, the frog. Lovely. <laughs> anyway, so, so you know, um, I understand that moms usually put on about 15 kilograms with, through pregnancy. Yeah. But when you were pregnant, it wasn't just 15 kg because you were carrying twins. It was 30, 30. kg. And to lose that, you went through fad diets, you went to slimming centers, and none of it worked. Yeah. Until you went to discover the science of yeah. fat loss. Tell us about that. Well, really, the science behind fat loss is um, to teach your body to tap on the fats in your body as a primary source of fuel and then it starts burning fats as you want it and that's how you reduce your body fat percentage level. Wait, wait, wait hang on. Yeah. How do you find this fat to tap on it? Yeah, how do you teach the body? Yeah. Hello body, please use the fat. Well, typically in society today, um, especially when we eat, we eat a lot of carbohydrate stuff, right? It can be processed carbohydrates, it can be, um, well, whole good foods but whatever it is when it goes into the body it turns it goes into the bloodstream as blood glucose and the body loves to use blood glucose as its f first resource of energy oh, okay and if you keep having that in the body the body will just keep using glucose and then the fats will just happily stay stacked up right right okay, now i understand <laughs> okay but how do you make sure that it's the fats that's being used uh well that's what <laughs> that's what we do. Uh, I bring my clients through. You have to eat the right way, you have to think the right way, and you have to move the right way, and to teach your body to tap on fats as the main source of fuel. Right. Um, at the end of the day, it's what you choose as your fitness goal, and then you move towards that with uh, by strategically um, managing these three pillars. Okay, so I think one of the first steps also is in knowing your body type. And in knowing your body type, you can better yes. um, access how your body burns fat. So okay. let, let's go through that. Okay. Um, uh, so, so what are they? Um, they typically, we um, categorize um, body types into uh, three big categories. So the first one is uh, what we call an eye type, which mm -hmm. is like an ectomorph. Oh. If you think of a celebrity that we typically know, if you can imagine Cameron Diaz, for mm. example. Sporty. Yeah, she always looks lanky. fit and all that, right? But yeah, she is, you're right, lanky. And then typically, um, the eye type, you know, if you just look at the alphabet eye, they're just straight. Very thin frame, small bone, and like, you know, whatever they eat, it seems like they never put on weight. <gasps> you know who is an eye type? Like, Chua and Lai, I think you are the eye type because you eat everything and you're still like always slender and skinny. I've never seen you put on weight. I am an eye type, am I? Oh, is he? I'm, I'm like you could an, be. An yes. Or do maybe you work I, hard iPad. exercising? I lie. I, I, oh, yes. <laughs> okay, and what's the next type? The second type uh, is a mesomorph. We typically, it's easy to remember as a V type. So V meaning like, you know, V shape, you know, uh, muscular. So this, this kind of um, body type, they put on muscle mass pretty easily if they work out well and okay, they do very well with mixed diet. Uh -huh. And then the last one um, is an endomorph. Um, you know, if you're an old type endomorph, um, like um, Jennifer Lopez, yes. <laughs> right? Doesn't mean she's obese or anything, but just that her body type is this manner, where she stacks on weight on, you know, typically for ladies with hips and, you know, um, big bust. But then um, that's how her body type is. And then she will do well with, um, you know, less carbohydrates in her food. Okay, okay, so this IVO thing works for guys as well. Oh yeah, they do. So we categorize them in three different ways and then guys, ladies are typically the same. But then, uh, yeah, let's look at, um, so... <laughs> okay, but hang oh, on. This is, what, this is what the uh, different types, body types should eat, is it? Okay, but yeah. before we get to that, um, are you like born one type and you stay one type? How, how does this work? No, so you are definitely not like strictly, oh, your eye means your eye forever. It could be because of a lifestyle change over 10 years, you've been doing the same things, you did sedentary lifestyle, your body type could change over time. And can it be a, a, a mixture? It can be two? a mixture. Like for myself, I'm more of a mix between an, uh, a, a V and an O. Okay. So I, I can build muscles pretty easily oh. and I can put on weight very easily too. Oh. Right. So it's understanding what your body type and then strategize accordingly. Okay. And then you can maintain a good, healthy body fat percentage. Okay. In that so are manner. you a mixture? Is Yaz a mixture of one or is she one or...? She could be. Mm. Okay, <laughs> let's go to the food. Okay, let's go to the three categories of food. Okay. If you were an eye, what sort of food should you eat or not eat? Right, so if you look at an eye type, um, so listed here in, um, in, in, in this uh, in this picture, mm. right, it's typically a meal. We're looking at a meal. 
right? Not, not a whole day, you know, a meal. So um, you have protein, vegetables, and carbohydrates. So typically when I coach my clients, I say we actually need CPF. Stop thinking about all the diets, we need three. C for carbohydrates, P for proteins, F for fats. Okay. So we need all those three. So for eye type, they typically handle carbohydrates very well. So they are allowed to, you know, happily have two cup handfuls of, you know, but carbohydrates. 0.5 thumb of fat. Yes. Okay, correct. let's compare it to the next one. Okay. Yes, let's look at the V-type. So V-type, right, what they do, they do very well with a mixed diet, but then, uh, so lesser carbs, and then they can do well with more fats. And okay. then the next one? And then the O-type, they don't handle carbohydrates very well, so maybe less carbohydrates, 0.5 cup, and then uh, they do very well with fats, so okay. increased fat percentage. I think that's oh. me. Thank you so much, Kareen, for the wonderful advice. And, uh, you know, she recently also released a book. It's entitled 18 Again, with even more practical advice and easy recipes to get you started on your journey, your fat loss journey. And she's kindly shared three of these recipes with Five Show. So if you want to get your hands on them, go to our Five Show Facebook page. And also for uh, today, especially for the Five Show viewers, what uh, for your viewers, if they're interested to get a copy of the book, they can go to my website at www.mumsinsting.com. Um, just contact me and I'll happily send you a complimentary copy. Thank you so much. That is so generous of you. Thank you, Kareem, for joining us. Now, up next, what is the average Singaporean's idea of the ideal body type? Well, JPG, our flashy Five Show fashion reporter, took to the streets to find out. Bonjour! I am JPG, Jean Paul Gui, and I am fashion everything. You know, people say that beauty is in the eye of beholder and that it comes in all shapes and sizes. <laughs> Rubbish! Now I'm going to ask people what they think beauty really is. You know it's Singapore Fashion Week now, right? Yeah. Well, I am actually Singapore Fashion Year. As I can tell, both of you are very fashionable. Of course, of course. Which body do you think is more beautiful? I like Miranda Kerr better. Kids. I like them both. <laughs> no, you cannot have chicken and beef. It's chicken or beef. Chicken, I guess. <laughs> Miranda. Do you think slimmer is better? I think clothes look better on thinner. But do you think Miranda Kerr's body type is a bit unrealistic for real women? You have to diet to get to that. You would aspire to have Miranda Kerr's body type? Yes, I will. I think Kate is definitely more natural. Because she's more shapely. She looks healthier. It's more close to what people can relate to. Which body type is more beautiful to you? Miranda Kerr. <laughs> Miranda Kerr. Miranda Kerr. Miranda Kerr. Okay, thank you, Mercy. A resounding success for Miranda Kerr's body type. Do you agree or disagree? Whatever it is, both of them wet my appetite. Back to you in the studio. You know, I'm like, there's mm -hmm. something about that guy. He just looks so familiar. I can't remember who he reminds me of. Mm, doesn't remind me of anyone. Is it? No. I have to think on that. But you know, mm. I guess it's still slim over curvy in this part of the world. It's so funny. When I was in the UK, size 14, 65 kg, I've had so many guys come to me. Oh my gosh, yes. You are so, you've got such a gorgeous figure. Then I come back to Singapore, say, hey, going on diet? Oh, yeah. yikes. So there, there is a difference. I think there is a cultural difference there the way is, we look at is. the women's body. Yeah. Uh, remember, there is no such thing as one size fits all for body types. It's not thin is in, but fit is it. And mm. we'll talk about the amazing transformation of two, of sexy mum number two, Gladys, in a bit. But meanwhile, let's go to Otelli for tonight's news headlines. Uh, headlines. Hey, Otelli. <laughs> hey, uh, well, coming up on News 5, it might be pitch perfect after all. The sports hub gets to the root of its stadium turf problems. And I'm going to tell you what replacement it's rolling out. Plus, Sun Ho takes the stand for the first time in the City Harvest trial with some surprising revelations about her own album sales. So I'll see you at 9. See you then. Put your hands together for sexy mom number two, Gladys Leong, as she strikes a pose.
Now Gladys started the Facebook community No Flab Mamas to help other mummies achieve their fitness goals. When she's not busy teaching pre- and postnatal fitness classes at a gym, Gladys enjoys taking part in bodybuilding competitions. Like that, who would believe that she used to have serious body issues? I know. Yeah. Have a look at this clip where she tells us about her rocky uphill battle towards wellness, including bouts with depression and an eating disorder. My name is Gladys. I am 35. I'm a mum of three. I was bulimic when I was barely 17. Once I overeat, I tend to force myself to vomit or I skip meals completely for the whole day till I get gastric and stuff. I was actually puking blood. Uh, it came about when I was pretty much overweight when my mom was still around. She had cancer and because I had to look after her, I was the only child. And uh, I skipped my meals and then I tend to overeat every single meal that I had time for. And so I put on weight very fast. I was 58. And at my height, it was really all plain fats. I was like round in the face, round in the arms, but all, yeah. I had male friends telling me that I, I, I look very big. I'm like, are you sure you're just 58? You look like you're 68, you look like you're 78. And you're that short, so they, the Hokkien term of Ebuite, the every day, came about. And it was very sore for me to hear such things. I was actually suicidal three times. It was the day after the cremation of my mom. I shut myself up in the kitchen of my house and I on the gas. And I eventually just passed out. And apparently my neighbors smelled the gas and called the civil defense. And yeah, it was like within, if they were late by 15 minutes, I could have died. Okay, I realized that um, by doing what I did, I was actually causing grievous hurt to myself, my health. I actually told myself probably I'll do something to, to hit the root of the problem instead of just, you know, forcing myself to puke, forcing myself not to eat. Gladys began focusing on being fit and healthy rather than thin and slim. But when she had her first baby at 24, the pounds piled on again. And this caused a slight setback in her journey towards wellness. Weight gain is actually my biggest struggle of having the first child. I was a little depressed at first, but the thought of the child and every single checkup that I went to, I saw the child growing. It actually helps and made me feel better. Through sheer grit and determination, Gladys finally reached her fitness goal. These days, she imparts her hard-earned knowledge to other mothers by conducting pre- and postnatal fitness classes. Many women will be like thinking, um, Look, it, it's not that we don't want to be fit, it's just that we have no time. But uh, to me, that is not an issue because I had, uh, when I first started out working out, when I have like, two kids, I need to wait till they are like fast asleep before I go for my night jogs, which is usually at 1 a.m. So if you make time for fitness, you don't, yeah, there's no excuse, seriously. I think exercise actually helped me feel more energetic as well and it has become a lifestyle instead of a chore. Once I look at my old pictures, I tell them, no, I don't want to look like that again. I don't want to go back to what I used to be. We've got Gladys with us. Now, Gladys, you think if your mom were here today, what do you think she would say? I think she would be very, very proud of me as um, I've overcome my own a problem of weight gain and I am now fitter than before. Well, it's been an amazing transformation. I think everyone can see that. What keeps you motivated yeah. to not going back to that very dark place that you were at when you were 18? Okay, basically it made me... Um, what made me motivated right now is uh, how I look to mums. They look up to me and um, to me right now, fitness has never been... It never meant so much to me before. By motivating other mums and all, I know and I tell myself all the time that I need to look and be fit 
to make sure that all my other clients do so too. Because they're looking up to you, yes. you're a role model. Yes. Well, um, I, I think everyone's pretty proud of you and everyone's looking, looking up to you as well. Absolutely. You know, we'll see more of Gladys in a while. Stay with us because she'll be showing us how to tighten our tummies, our butts and our arms. Like this way. Welcome back. Now, before the break, Gladys shared with us her struggle towards health and wellness, and she showed us some of her bodybuilding poses. Now, she's going to show us some exercises that deal with areas that many women are concerned about. The abs, the butt, and the arms. Okay, so let's start with the abs, the stomach problem area for a lot of women. Yep. What should we do? Okay, this is a gym ball. You can get it from any sports store. Mm -hmm. Lie your back on the gym ball, hands covering your ears. Chin up, always chin up, never tuck in your chin. Okay. Crunch upwards. One. Right. So it's not chin to stomach? Nope. Okay. You'll be using your neck if you do this. Yeah. Okay. You want to use the abs, obviously. Yes, you want to okay. use the and, abs. And how many repetitions should we do? You can do 12 reps, 3 sets. 3 sets of 12 reps. Yeah. Okay, let, okay, let's try the butt now. Sure. We want nice perky butts. Okay. Ball in between your legs. Squeeze it tight. I don't see anything. What's happening here? Okay, what I'm doing is I'm using my inner thighs uh -huh. to squeeze the ball. At the same time, it firms my butt and my hamstrings. You try. Uh -huh. Oh, there you go. Okay, Come on, sure. Okay. okay, so what do I do? Do okay. I just bounce? No! <laughs> what do spin. I do? Yeah. Squeeze it. Oh, ah, okay. Squeeze it. Come on. Ah. Cleanse ah. the butt. <laughs> okay, yes, I think I feel it right here in my inner thigh. Ne it never got to my butt, but my inner thighs really hurt. Okay, how about how many reps do we need to do for this? Um, this probably about 10 sets. Okay. Just hold on for five seconds and then relax for two seconds and then... And do it 10 three. times over. Okay. okay let's... And what's next? We've got the arms. arms. The boing, boing, boing arms. Okay, what we'll do now is for the bicep. This is a resistant band. You just step on it. Straighten the bend. Keep your shoulders mm -hmm. to the back. Hands by the side. Pull it up. Okay, so this is for the biceps. The biceps. What about what about the flabby bits? Okay, this actually tones it too, but the next exercise will actually get help. Okay, okay. how, how many reps do we do with the biceps? This will be 12 reps, 3 sets. Okay. okay, 3 sets or 12. How What's the next the, one? The how flabby about the, one, the, the flabby bye one. The bye-bye. Yeah. Okay. It's called the bye-bye arms, right? Bye-bye. Bye, when you wave bye, 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 they bye. kind of Okay, I'm wiggle. sure everyone oh. has this at home if you don't have weights. Okay, all you need to do is straighten it. Mm -hmm. Put it to the back of your head. Up. Straight up. It's really side. sensible with a bottle of water, you know. Yeah. And, and you can just increase the weight by putting sand or whatsoever and, in it. And how many reps do you do for this? 12 reps, 3 sets as well. Awesome. And all together, how long will this take you? About 20 minutes? Yes. 20 and how minutes. often do you do it a week? I would recommend 48 hours. Every 48 hours. Oh, okay. okay. So not every day, every no. two days kind yeah. of. Yeah. Alright, well thank you very, cool. very much thank Gladys you. for showing the exercises. Thank you. Thank you. You can do this at home. Remember that. And for more exercise tips and tricks, go to Gladys's YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. I will definitely be going there. <laughs> it is YouTube youtube.com slash gdsta177 meanwhile i hope you guys have a really um fitness night fitful night how do you say fitful no <laughs> anyway thank you very much to kareen and gladys for coming on the show and we will see you tomorrow even fitter than ever exactly. i will show you my abs <laughs> oh shall i show you my abs no, now no 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 Come on. No, do you want to see his I'll show you right? before and after. No, no thanks. Thanks, Eli, but no thanks, yeah. Okay. Yeah, this, this ball, right?